According to my extensive research, more than 50% of you don't know what the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit is. Look, here's the evidence. We've got a very simple question. Do you use the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit? And the overwhelming majority said, what's that? 51% of you. So that's what this one's all about. We're going to go through what the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit is and use it to deploy Chrome. So we're back here. Let's go into uh, the website, psappdeploymenttoolkit.com. Very simple. It tells you all about it. It's got some screenshots, how you download it. The community around it is massive. The about, the donate, and the news. Take a look at all that in your own time. psappdeploymenttoolkit.com. It is brilliant. Let's get started, though. We'll choose download. Over to GitHub. Scroll all the way down past this change log to psappdeploymenttoolkit. Zip. Click that, it downloads. This is what you get when you extract that zip file. Actually, you don't get these two things. I've put these in here since then. But you get uh, these uh, five things, right? So the thing we need, though, to, to use the toolkit is the stuff in the toolkit. So we're going to grab all this stuff, and I'm going to put it in a folder that I've created called Google Chrome Enterprise, and in the source folder, I'm going to put it here. I call it build. I'm going to paste all of that toolkit straight into here. I'm not even going to look at it. I'm just going to use it later. Now I need to grab Google Chrome Enterprise. I've downloaded this from, well, the website for downloading Google Chrome, chromeenterprise.google. So brilliant. They've got their own top level domain. So we're going to choose get Chrome browser and scroll down a little bit and you get the options here. So we're going to go with stable as opposed to beta, uh, MSI, because that's brilliant, 64 bit, and then choose download and accept and download the terms of use. And just download this 64 bit MSI for us. Once that's done, just grab it and put it in the right place. So I'm gonna put it in this build folder and I need it to go in the files folder of this toolkit. So in files, right click and paste, and there is our MSI. Now it would be really simple to just use Intune to deploy the MSI, right? So we could just go into the app section in Intune and deploy the MSI, really simple. But that's that wouldn't be using the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit. So let's take a different scenario, right? We wanna deploy the MSI, but we need a little bit more control for whatever reason. Let's have an example. Let's go into the build, and see what files we've got. So we've got deployapplication.exe, a config file, and a PS1. Those are the only things you really need to know about. In fact, the only thing you really need is this deploy application PS1. So that's what we're going to take a look at in a few seconds. But for now, let's have a quick look in the app deployment toolkit folder. This is all customizable in here. You can change the banner that gets created by default. You can add some additional language and um, support text in the XML here. You can add in additional extensions. There's loads of customization you can do, but this would need to be transported around with all the different packages that you create with this toolkit. For now, I'm going to leave it as standard just so you can see what the standard is and go back to build. And in files, that's the, the file I've just put in there. Those are the key files for this installation. Support files. If you do have any additional files that you need, in order to support this installation, then you can put them in there. And then you've got deploy application, you've got the config, and then you've got deploy application PS1. Let's take a look at deploy application PS1. So here we are. And we need to start at the top. Very simple, loads of description here, loads of examples here, it's brilliant. Scrolling down on, we can see, we can, put some additional metadata in here. So we'll call this bit Google. The app name is Chrome Enterprise. The version is app version 99, architecture is x64. Great, and the date, it's today's date. Okay, good. That's all you need for this bit. Next we have the, uh, the start of the script. So little bit of logic here if the deployment type is not equal to uninstall and the deployment type is not equal to repair then do this so 
Effectively, if we're installing and not uninstalling or repairing, then let's do this. So this is the phase called pre-installation, and we're going to do something, which is the show installation welcome function. We're going to close any apps with this executable, and then allow the user to defer, allow them to choose to defer three times, check the disk space, and then persist the prompt for the user if they keep if they just ignore it it'll re it'll keep re reappearing on the screen for them and then once that's done we're going to jump down to show installation progress and then the pre-installation tasks can go here so i don't really have any pre-installation tasks for chrome but you could have some pre-installation tasks that you might need but let's assume that i'm happy with this apart from i explore i don't really need internet explorer to close for me um but perhaps I would need Chrome to close because if they were running an existing version of Chrome and I'm going to install a new one over the top, I can get it to close Chrome for me. So that's the pre-installation section done. Next, we have the installation section. Install phase is installation. Now we've got the option here of using zero config MSI installations. And whilst I am using an MSI, I want to show you how you can configure this a little bit more than just zero config. So let's do some config. And also I quite like the fact that if we do some configuration that is explicit within the code, then we don't need to explain it and comment it. It's very obvious what's going to be happening. So let's jump back in and take a look. I'm not going to do this zero config installation thing. I'm going to leave that there. It is possible to use, take a look at the docs, but I'm just going to not use that. Perform installation tasks here. And so for this, I need to start a little bit of code, right? So I'll type what we need and I'll show you how you get that. So we go for execute MSI and the action we're going to use is uh, install and the path for the install install installation is uh, wait, it's the name of my Chrome installer from files, which that's a bit that's a long long name grab all of that put that there great put quotes around it just in case it's got space but it doesn't in this case which is good practice and there we go so we don't need to say quiet we don't need to add any additional formatting around that in order for it to be silent powerful app deployment toolkit knows all around how to do that so it's just going to do it for us by default so that's that. But how did I end, how did I get that right? There's there's no there's no clear information within this script how you put that in there. Let's take a look straight back over to the toolkit here. We've got this PDF right. So all the stuff I've been through already is explained in this PDF. But let's jump into it for now and take a look at what it says. So really good documentation here. Execute MSI. Got a few bits here and there's a fantastic piece of documentation here so it this function that I'm using execute MSI exec to perform the following actions and you can use it exactly like this this is exactly what I've just done very simple really simple to use so that's what we need to do let's go back to the code that's what we're going to do right it will install this file for us so post installation do we need to do anything not really. In this case, I don't need it to happen. Um, so if, if we're not using the default MSI, we can show this. It will show this installation prompt. And the text will be, you can customize this to appear at the end or remove it for completely unattended installs. So, I mean, I can just remove that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll just remove that. Don't want that in there. Don't need that at all. Great. And then next we've got the pre uninstallation. So if we're uninstalling this application, so we're going to go with Chrome. So it'll close and it'll give you the it'll give the user a 60 second uh, countdown on closing Chrome. And then any pre uninstallation task, any any thing else you need to do before uninstalling it. And then again, we've got this zero config MSI on installation, which is not what I'm going to do. Instead, what I'm going to do is 
execute MSI. Action is uninstall. And again, the path is that Chrome setup. Nope. Chrome setup. Let's grab it from the installer. Awesome. All done. Okay, so then the post installation tasks are here. Then if we need to repair, we've got these repair tasks here. There's the default MSI uh, if, if we want to use that instead. And then that's it. So then we can have some exit codes. If we want to use exit codes, we can. But for this, let's just leave the basic ones there. So 6001 is if there's an error. All good. So we'll save this script and jump down to the Google Chrome Enterprise source build and here we have this we've got this we've got this file that's just been saved all good right so now we need to run this so now it's over to Intune right we need to get this um get this packaged up and then into Intune so hopefully you remember from the previous video how to package up this file as a Win32 app because that's what we're going to be using so let's jump into that so we're going to head over to the Intune app creation folder, choose Intune WinApp Util, and then very simply grab the source folder. Okay, so we're going to go into PS, PS After One Toolkit, Google Chrome Enterprise Source, and this is the folder here. So we're going to grab all the content of that folder. Nice and simple. Setup file. Loads of options here. We can use the executable PS1, but the, the cheat, right, is we're going to use this one here because that will help us with the detection method later on. So let's grab that here. You can see it is called that. Now, we already know the start of this path because we've told it what the source folder is. So we just need the addition there, which is files. So we're going to grab that string there, type that there. And the output folder, very simply, is uh, over into output. And we'll pop that there. All good. No catalog today. Job done. Let's see that finish. Okay, we've got the Intune win file. Fantastic. So over to Intune, choose an app type, down to Win32 app, select app package file. Now we know where that is, right? It's this output file here that we've just created, all done. It knows it's got some information about this file. It's pre-filled all this information for us. It doesn't quite have that. The version isn't anything like I thought it was, but let's leave that for now and choose next. And it knows how to install it, but we don't want to use these uh, these commands. We want to use the app deployment toolkit, right? So we're going to go with deploy application ps one Now we don't need to do an, uh, a, a command to install it. And here we've got Deploy application, PS1, deployment type, uninstall. Now, this isn't quite right because this is not going to be able to run on its own. We need actually to bypass the PowerShell uh, execution policy. So it's going to be PowerShell.exe execution policy bypass and the file we're going to run is this one here there we go so that's that we have an additional return code that we looked at just a few seconds ago which is 6001 and that will be a fail okay we're ready to go. Architecture, 64-bit. No one's going to be using anything older than 1909, hopefully, this day and age. Choose Next. Rule Format. We can normally choose additional rules for detection, but in this case, if we choose MSI, you can see it's already pre-filled it for us because we chose the MSI when we were packaging that in the Intune Win Format. Choose OK. Next. And then dependencies, not in this case, and supersede, and certainly not for today. So next. 
Now I want to make it available to all users rather than required so we can show the uninstall as well. So let's choose available for all users and then choose next and create. I'm going to go ahead and upload that to Intune so that we can make it available to our end users. And that is it. I mean, it's sim it's really quite simple to use and it's a fantastically customizable piece of kit. The PowerShell application deployment toolkit is brilliant. I haven't got a load of time to go into all the customization you can do, but if you need to do any additional things when you're installing an app other than just install it and maybe uninstall it, then the PSADT is awesome. See you next time.